All right, in this video, I'll talk about the basic ideas of chapter eight, which hopefully will help you understand things and help you with problems. All right, so um, the chapter's on energy, and one of the main ideas is if you do work, the work you do turns into some type of energy, and there's lots of forms of energy, and so the work can, can turn to any type that you're dealing with. So what is work? Um, Work is defined as, um, we can call it W, the work done is the force times the distance, and the distance has to be in the direction of the force. Um, so for instance, if you carry something sideways, there's really no force stopping you. Gravity's going up and down, so no work is done. So the force and the distance have to be in the same direction. If you're pulling something along and you're dragging it along, but you're pulling at an angle with the force, well, the force that you use, and you're pulling it along this way, so it's dragging along the ground, you're pulling it along this way, um, the force that you use is the horizontal part, the force that's actually doing the work in the direction. So that's really important. It's always the force that you use for work is in the direction that it's moving. Okay, um, so what are the units? Force is in Newtons and distances in meters. So a Newton times a meter is the unit of work, and they decided to call that a joule after a famous person who did a lot of research and energy a long time ago. So work is in Newtons times meters, which is a joule. Um, and that's the unit of energy in the metric system. Um, and work is energy. So if you do work to lift something straight up, Okay, then to lift something straight up, the force is gravity, which is mg, and the distance you, you move it is like the height. So in other words, you're lifting something up from here to here, and so you lift it up a certain height, h, and it's got a certain mass, and it's in gravity, so gravity is pulling downwards. So the work you do is mgh, and that is what's called the potential energy. So the potential energy is the energy it has because it's up higher. Um, so you can do work and turn something into potential energy, which is mgh, um, which again has units of joules. Or you can do work to get something moving. If you do work something getting moving, you give it kinetic energy, um, which is one half of the mass times the velocity squared. If you're lifting it up and moving it, then it can give kinetic energy and potential energy. Um, the idea with this is, of course, you go twice as fast since the velocity is squared, you have four times the kinetic energy. Um, you go three times as fast, you have nine times the kinetic energy. So in other words, energy, kinetic energy increases really quickly with speed. And again, kinetic energy is in joules. Um, you can also do work and it gets turned into friction. So the work done can be the force of friction times the distance you move it. If you're dragging along on a flat surface, you know, you're dragging your box along the flat, sur the flat surface which has a mu, and you're dragging along this way with some force, um, and it's got a mass, then uh, the work done against friction is mu times mg, that's the force of friction like we used last chapter, times the distance that you drag it. Um, so work can be done, the energy can go in lots of different places, in this case is heat, because friction usually just ends up getting surfaces warm. Um, in this case is height, you lift it up, in this case is speed. Um, so the work done, you move, put a, exert a force to move something, it can go into different places. Um, so the formulas are easy to use, how high do you lift something? Multiply by the mass times gravity, that's the kinetic energy something has by its height above the ground, or just one half mv squared, make sure to square the velocity. Again, the units we'll always be using are kilograms and meters per second. Um, and then we'll just make sure that we get joules. If that's all standard units, we know that we're gonna get joules. Um, okay, so, and also make sure that if they say to lift something, if they say newtons, we know it's mg. If they say kilograms, we know we have to multiply by g. So be careful of that. Um, so if they say newtons, we know that's mg. Um, okay, looking at some of the problems, it says something like calculate the change in potential energy of 8 million kilograms of water 
dropping 50 meters over Niagara Falls. This is number 25. Um, so potential energy is just MGH. So we can say the potential energy of gravity, gravitational potential energy, is the mass times G times H. So you just plug in how much is falling. You can use G as 10 and height, how far is it falling, and that's the potential energy you have. All right, that's the basic ideas of work and energy. Hopefully that helps you out. Um, then the next big idea is how fast you do work. So if you do work really fast, you should get credit for that, and that's called power. So power is defined as the work divided by the time it takes to do it. So that's going to be in joules how many joules of work divided by how many seconds that you're able to perform it. And that has a special name also. A joule per second is a watt. So watt is a unit of power, and that's just saying how fast you do the work. If you do the same amount of work in one second versus 10 seconds, you have 10 times the power. Um, and a unit of power from history where James Watt, uh, scientists a long time ago decided back then to try to get a unit of power and he had a horse lift up 550 pounds so he had a 550 pound weight which he figured that's typical for a horse and the horse um, could lift it up by a pulley so the horse was walking along and it could lift up 550 pounds about a foot per second and he figured a horse could do that about all day so he called that a horsepower a horsepower is 550 foot-pounds per second. When you convert that to watts, a horsepower is 746 watts. Um, it's just kind of a historical unit. People like using it for cars and motors because it kind of gives you a feeling for, oh, it's so many horses, what a horse could do. Um, so 746 watts is one horsepower. Um, that comes up in some of the problems to help work things out. Um, so a typical problem is, let's say you have a a 50 kilogram person runs up a 10 meter high hill <clears throat> in five seconds. Okay, so what is the power that person generates? So the power is the work divided by time, which in this case is the potential energy the person gets, or the force, which is mg times the height, times the distance upwards, divided by five seconds. Well, let's see, mg, it's 50 kilograms, times g is 10, times the height, that's 500, times the height is 10, divided by five. I made the math easy. 500 by five is 100, times 10 is 1,000, so that would be 1,000 watts. So that person would be exerting 1,000 watts if you did that, which is possible. People can exert more than a horsepower for a short amount of time. Um, hard to exert horsepower for a long time but for a short amount of time you could go one or two horsepower um, so this would be like 1.2 1.3 horsepower or something you just divide by 746 to get horsepower okay um, that's basically the first part of the chapter dealing with things like that um, the second part talks about simple machines um, and I'll save that for another video um, but yeah so first we'll just worry about power and jewels and everything um, and we'll save simple machines for our next part. Um, by the way, one I guess one of the things we should talk about is for the human body and for heat energy, there's another unit that's often used, which is a calorie. So a small c calorie, a small c calorie is the amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of water, one gram of H2O, one degree Celsius. So it's a nice metric unit. There's nothing wrong with calories. It's how the amount of heat it takes, heat energy, to raise one gram of water, one degree Celsius. But a gram of water is a small amount. So instead they call, usually we use a big C calorie, and this is what you think about in foods, which is a kilo, a thousand little C calories. So that's what it takes to raise a thousand grams of water, which is a kilogram, which is the units we always use. So that's the amount of heat it takes to raise one kilogram of H2O, one degree Celsius. Still one degree Celsius, but that's what we normally use when we think about food. Turns out that's about 4,186 joules. 
So a kilo, a calorie that when you eat a calorie, you're consuming what ends up being 4,186 joules of energy, which is a lot. It's a big number. Um, a small C calorie then is 4.186 joules, or a big C that we normally think of, which is a kilocalorie, 4,186 joules. Um, and you probably know from your health class and stuff that a gram of carbs, one gram of carbs has about four calories in it, four big C calories, and a gram of fat has about nine big C calories. So fat is much more efficient per gram. Um, a gram of protein is about the same as carbs. Um, it's only about four calories um, if you break it down for energy, if you don't use it to you know, build stuff. Um, <clears throat> okay, so if you know if you know the amount of joules you use, you can figure out how many calories it takes to do that. <clears throat> and then you can figure out how many grams of food you have to eat <clears throat> excuse me, to supply the calories that you need. So that's also a kind of problem that's kind of fun to figure out. So, okay, hope that helps. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.